Welcome to America and welcome to Illinois. Today we're talking with James Wang about J4500 from MCI and Scania Touring. James Wang has the YouTube channel called Motor Coach World and if you want to check him out, do that, click on the link here and follow his American bus adventures. And also check out our channel to see much more of the European and also now the American bus and coach services. Now let's make the comparison Scania versus MCI. So it's a pleasure to finally be here in America, sitting in one of the coaches of Peoria Charter with James Wang from Motor Coach World. I'm so excited, James, and I can't wait to talk about this subject. So let's see what we will find out with these few words we're going to exchange right now. And maybe also the manufacturers we learn from this video. I think there's going to be a lot to be learned from uh, what we discussed today. And I just want to say, please keep the comments clean because I know that a lot of you are very passionate about uh, your particular bus from your side of the world, but this is an opening of the minds and we should be open-minded uh, and really listen to the differences, the compare and contrast, the goods and the bads between the two different motor coaches that operate on opposite ends of the world. So you can say that first of all, in, in Europe we do have more design solutions than what we can see here in the US. When we come to the US, we can see that all coaches and buses looks a bit similar. And even the brand new coaches today looks like they did for many, many years ago. In Europe, we develop our design quite a lot. So it's interesting to see what our thoughts are on the different kind of products, which is brand new or a little bit older. I would like to say that both Tom and Magna has had the opportunity to drive uh, explore, crawl through the Scania Touring, and now uh, as well as the MCI J4500 here in the US. I, however, have logged uh, thousands of hours behind the wheel of an MCI J4500. However, I have never even seen a Scania Touring. So, uh, I would like to hear, let's start with uh, Let's start with the dash. On the MCI J4500, both of you have driven it. Tell the viewers uh, a comparison between the dash panel, the driver's area of the MCI J4500 and the Scania Touring. I will start with telling you this, that the Scania Touring was designed for more than 12, 13 years ago. So it's uh, the same dashboard all the way up to a few years ago when they changed it. And uh, as, um, as I feel, it's a more like a cockpit. When you're sitting there, it's following your body around, so you can reach all the buttons from a great distance. I have a good experience with it. And you're also sitting a little bit far from the window than in the United, in coaches here in the United States. It feels like you are closer to the win front window. What I really like with the European built, uh, or this is actually not even European built, the Scania Touring is a Swedish driveline built in China. So that's a little bit also strange compared to what we see in Europe in general. That's normally built in Europe, but we send the chassis to China, produce it there, build it there. What you see when you're sitting behind the steering wheel of a Scania Touring is that you can reach everything, like Tom just said, from the steering wheel. If I want to put on my blinker, I just tap my left hand up and down. But if you're going to take on your blinkers on the MCI, I have to lean quite far ahead to actually reach the blinker. So it's a completely different way of just doing the simplest thing, like turning on the blinker. Awesome. Well, um, I will say that uh I looked at a picture of the Scania, Scania Touring's cockpit and um, after listening to what you guys said about the MCI, I found them to be quite similar. And I thought, you know, um, uh, in Europe they always say that buses in America look very old, even the brand new design. And this being a 2020, uh, I thought, wow, well, I didn't find the dashes that different com in comparison to the J and the Scania Touring. But then you said the Scania Touring was designed in 2010, which uh, now confirms the 10-year-old uh, the, uh, uh, design uh, lag, I'll call it, between U.S. bus design and uh, European bus design. With that said, uh, how is the Scania Touring a, a pretty popular coach in Europe? Yes, it is, because it's a... Uh it's not a premium coach, it's, uh, it's in, on the middle of the way up to a premium coach. So it's uh, popular for the intercity coach driving, 
and also uh, for companies that uh, that want to have a fleet with some premium coach and and some medium coach. And the drive line on it is really comfortable to drive. Transmission is smooth and soft, and and it's also quite nice in the fuel economy. I think it's a nice coach to drive if you are in this kind of segment for shuttle transport and but maybe not for the long distances like going 10 days in Europe and stuff. Of course we're talking about the 45 foot version or otherwise 4 meter long 3 axle Scania. At least 14 meters long. 4 meters will be a very oh, short height. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm bad with the metrics. So the 14 meter long 3 axle Scania is the equivalent of the 45 foot long 3 axle uh, MCIJ. And uh, let's talk about the, uh, the performance in driving. Now, obviously you've driven this uh, J4500. It's got a Cummins ISX12, uh, 400 horsepower diesel engine with the Allison B500 transmission. And what's inside the Scania uh, Touring? The engine in the Scania Touring is uh, the DC13 and it's uh, around 420 horsepower. And you have the manual automatic transmission. It means that it's a manual gearbox that is automated. So uh, you have 12 uh, steps. The difference I feel when I was driving the J4500, that where you have the Allison full automatic gearbox in six speed, that you have a really quick, uh, or what you call it, really fast acceleration from zero. In a manual automatic transmission, it's a little bit slower. And if you come to a, uh, yes, a turning in the, in the road, you have to start on zero. It takes a few seconds more before the coach starts driving in Europe compared to what you have with the full automatic gearbox here. And this is also a matter of taste because I really love that comfortable gear shift. And up until 2000s, the Scania transmission, the manually one, was called comfort shift. You could do the pre-gearing. Uh, Selecting. Pre-selecting. Pre and then you use the clutch and then the gear was jumping into the right uh, number. So it was really, really comfortable to use. And today, it, uh, this is now automated, but it's still the manual gearbox. I really like that feeling. But as well, if you're just going to be efficient, the Allison transmission is really comfortable because it takes you into speed almost immediately. Like you said yesterday, this is like driving a race car. It is. And it's, of course, in Europe, we can choose. We can choose from automatic, full automatic gearbox to manual automatic gearbox to manual gearbox. So it's, it's a choice you can take. Here in the United States, I, I had a feeling that most of the coaches are running with the Allison B500 gearbox, six steps automatic gearbox. So you, you cannot choose, if you have a fleet of eight to 10 buses, you cannot choose to have different gearboxes in them, as I understand. Well, that's very interesting. So it sounds like uh, acceleration wise, the uh, US coaches perform a little better um, based on that. Uh, now, when you say manual, is that the S-Tronic or are they actually shifting? Oh, the, uh, the old manual gear shift, the stick shift. Is, is that still common in, Euro in, in uh, newer European coaches? You can coaches? get it if you pay for it, but most of I would say 90%, 95% of the coaches have uh, automatic gearbox because of the torque of the engine. And I don't think anyone wants the manual stick anymore yeah. on a new you coach. See it, yeah, you see it on, uh, especially on the minibus market in the East Europe, they choose the manual gearbox. Mm. And the West part of Europe, they, uh, they go for the automatic, manual automatic gearbox. Yeah. So as far as the interior goes, let's talk about the passenger seating and the uh, restroom. The Scania Touring is 55 seats, I believe. Yeah, you can specify like you want because in Europe you always have the middle door as well. And now you can also get it with the rear door. So you will have a big luggage compartment underneath and then you will have the wheelchair lift over the third axle. Mm -hmm. And then you will have the rear door and also the rear toilet. Yes. So that's a quite new modern version. But the previous Touring that's been produced until the mid start 2020s that had the middle door and also the middle toilet and that's quite narrowed and you don't want to stay there too long. Okay. <laughs> I feel, it's, I feel it's, uh, this is also something that is a big different from Europe to uh, United States that we know uh, in Europe we have two doors we have the middle door or the rear door uh, plus the front door of course so you lose like four seats on yeah. doing that configuration here you have only one door. And then seats wise, uh, I know I heard you guys mention that uh, American US designed seats are very archaic uh, in comparison to uh, the Europeans uh, models. Uh, and compared to the Scania Touring, how would you compare the seats uh, from the interior to uh, US models? Scania had this kind of seats in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, and the Finnish with, factory called Aoki. Yeah, yes, without a seat belt, of course. And so what's different today? They are I, more uh, ergonomic made for passenger. They are thinner in the, in the um, what you call it, uh, the foaming. Mm -hmm. Just uh, similar to what you see in the airplane. And they're probably much lighter. Yes, and absolutely. I will actually so. try to find because I was driving a bus, a Scania bus from the 1989, I think, mm -hmm. and I did that bus have kind of this seat. So I will try to find that video for you <laughs> so you can cut into this one. But the, the weight on the seat is of course very important because we are more focused on the total weight yeah. in Europe than you maybe are in the US. But the good thing here in the American coaches is the ceiling. Look at this futuristic perfect ceiling. This looks like you're entering the newest airplane on the airport, taking you all over the world. I really like it. So on the top here, the coach is the most modern thing i ever seen. But when you go down to the seats and you see the window shapes and also the panels above here, I think it's too old fashioned. But I really like the overhead compartment. You can lock them down. It looks more like an airplane. And also the ceiling with the lightning. Really, really perfect. Okay, well, it sounds like uh, the US has some catching up to do. What a great uh, eye-opening um, uh, chat this was. Uh, definitely getting a better perspective at uh, all around the world. I appreciate you guys being here. It's been wonderful. This is amazing to be in the United States just to take a look at the coaches and buses. You're always welcome. James, thank you so much for having us here. It's been a pleasure to stay with you here in Peoria, and I really hope to come back to you very soon. Cool to speak with you about the J4500 comparison to the Scania Touring. Awesome, and I, I hope I can visit you guys one day in Europe and drive one of your coaches around. Of that would be fantastic. See you around, James. All right, guys, see you later. Thank you so much for watching the video here today. And if you like what you see, please click down here below. The button is called subscribe, and then you will see all the future videos here on YouTube. Until then, have a great day. Drive safely.